What's up everyone? Welcome back to another view and this time we're going to be taking a look at Reservoir Dogs written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. Now Reservoir Dogs is a very important movie in cinema history because it is the first theatrical release of one Quentin Tarantino and not for nothing Reservoir Dogs is a fantastic movie. For a first outing this Tarantino this movie gave us a glimpse as to what Tarantino is capable of. Now of course this is a first movie so was, he wasn't refined yet but the the bare essentials are in Reservoir Dogs, from the characters, from the writing, from the setup, to how Tarantino moves the camera, to how he lights up his shots, to how he has all the characters interact with one another. All those elements are in Reservoir Dogs. And again, you have awesome actors who bring these characters and, these, and this dialogue to life. You have Harvey Keitel as Mr. White, Tim Roth as Mr. Orange, Michael Madsen as Mr. Blonde. Steve Buscemi as Mr. Pink, Eddie Bunker as Mr. Blue, and Tarantino himself as Mr. Brown. Plus you've got Chris Penn as Nice Guy Eddie, and you have Lawrence Tierney as Joe, who is pretty much the boss, the ringleader of this heist. Now, what I like about Reservoir Dogs is that we never actually see the robbery that is mentioned throughout the movie. We never see it take place. Everything is said to us in dialogue, and we're in our imagination pieces everything together. Now, we get glimpses of the aftermath here and there of the heist, and our imagination puts everything together. From the bits of, from the bits of, uh, from the from the brief snippets we get post the heist to what the characters say in dialogue, our imaginations piece together what exactly happened. And I love when movies do that. You know, it's the it's the old show. It's that. It's the old show, don't tell mentality. Like we don't have, to, not sure, whatever. You know what I mean? It's 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 the move. It's the visual meaning of a movie, letting the viewer piece together how it happened. And so in your own mind, we we figure out what went on. Like when Mr. White says Mr. Blonde went completely psycho and started shooting people. In our imagination, knowing what kind of character Mr. Blonde is and and who and his whole story, we can see. Yeah, this man's a complete psychopath. And if you don't believe it. The infamous ear scene is what sums up Mr. Blonde's character in a nutshell. He has a cop, they kidnap a cop, he traps him to a chair, they start playing Steeler's Wheel. All of a sudden, Mr. Blonde is dancing and chopping ears off. It's a gruesome scene, but what I like about it is that it's not explicitly violent. You don't see Mr. Blonde physically chop the ear off. You see Mr. Blonde from the back. And we see the knife dig in. We see the knife dig into the side, but the camera, the Tarantino shoots it in a way where the camera pans off Mr. Blonde and the cop, and you're just seeing like an entryway. You never see Blonde cut the ear off. It's all left to the imagination. Of course, in the aftermath, we see Blonde playing around with the ear, and we see the cop f physically just have no ear on the on his, on the side of his face. Again, it's that visual storytelling and leaving everything up to the imagination, which I love. Uh, this movie also introduced the whole split narrative deal where every, the movie takes place in the present and then every, then we get these glimpses and flashbacks to everything. Like like certain characters, we get like full stories. Like for, for Mr. White, we get who Mr. White is. We get his relationship with Joe and Nice Guy Eddie. Same thing with Mr. Blonde. We find out he and Eddie are best friends and that he's like a, and that Joe's a, and that he took the fall for for Joe's family and went to prison because of it. And we, we see that even though Blonde is a psychopath, he has a sense of loyalty to nice guy Eddie and Joe. We also get a little bit of a backstory for uh, Mr. Orange. And we find out that Mr. Orange is actually the rat of the group who's an undercover cop who pretty much gives them away. And that's how the whole diamond heist went, uh, went awry, was because of Mr. Orange and who he is. And the revelation of Mr., uh, Mr. Orange as a cop comes late in the movie, like near, near the end. But throughout the entire movie, Tarantino was really corky and planted these little seeds these little hints all throughout the movie like in the diner scene when joe is asking people to give tips and mr pink doesn't give a tip mr orange raps out mr pink you know it's those it's those it's those little things that when you watch it from, from a first time you don't see it but when you watch from it from a second time then you you're like wow he just ran them out and at the end of the movie he ends up being a rat so i like things like that and this movie has that in spades so in addition to awesome performances, a very solid script, you have a great soundtrack. Tarantino is always known for using, for incorporating popular music into certain scenes and making it work. 
Uh, my favorite, my favorite is when they play Little Green Bag. When we see the boys walking down with the credit scene, I love it. Steelers Wheel with the infamous ear scene, I love that too. And you have other songs sprinkled here throughout as well, which I thought was really handled beautifully. Oh man, so yeah, there's a lot more to talk about with Reservoir Dogs, but I just thought I just want to give you my broad strokes about Reservoir Dogs. Overall, I love Reservoir Dogs. Now I do got some issues. This is a first time viewing, so. There are certain things that, again, we see they're, they're not re really refined yet. Like a lot of the camera work has not really quite been refined. It's good, but always room for more improvement. But I can let that slide. Overall, to me, this is a perfect movie. And I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Because from a story-wise, acting-wise, this movie hits all the right beats. For a first time out, this is fantastic stuff. So yes... If you have not seen Reservoir Dogs, and if, you, and if you call yourself a Quentin Tarantino fan, you owe it to yourself to watch this movie because it is spectacular. The cast is great. The script is intelligent and just interesting. The whole story itself is engaging. How Tarantino presents everything is just unique for the time. So yes, 10 out of 10 for Reservoir Dogs. So those are my thoughts on Reservoir Dogs. Let me know yours in the comment sections down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I would like to know. Also, let me know what your all-time favorite Quentin Tarantino movie is. We're getting really, really close to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and I can't wait. So, yes, my name is AT Legend. Like this video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.